All right, let's go ahead and speed things up a little bit. Let's go ahead and learn our running skill. Brah! As I'm sure we make our first of many trips between the castle gates and the castle gate. Oh, wait. The castle gates and the town gates. There's too many gates in this game. There's also a lot of belching. Hello again. Uh, hi. Can, uh. When the days are short and the nights grow long, a friendly face is a welcome sign. Yeah, well, whatever. Hey, do you want to explain this whole situation with your wife there? I'm going to... Let's, let's keep things civil. Let's keep things civil. Hello. It is so difficult to get past the swamp which blocks the pass to and from the valley. We haven't had a stranger here since the rains created the swamp several years ago. We haven't had the spirit here since 1969. All right. Mm, Olga says you are you're uh, not a nice guy. You tell Boris what Olga said about him. He blushes. He would if he had skin. Olga was always opinionated. I grew tired of listening to her complain about me all the time. And you can tell her I said so, he means to say. All right, well... Farewell, uh, and may your path lead to your goal. Thank you, Mr. Quotable Quotes. All right, off we go. Let's go talk to Olga again. I have a feeling that before too much longer, we're going to be either responsible for them killing each other or patching up their marriage. Wait, I'm a thief. Why am I even doing this? Why am I doing good deeds? Well, whatever. First and foremost, I am a hero. Sphincter time. You were gone for so long. Back again so soon. What have you heard lately? Hmm. Well, at least she knows that I was only gone for like 10 seconds. She wasn't like, oh, it's been forever since I've seen you. That was a really bad impression. I have probably bad. Oh, uh, well, you see, Boris said that you're a nagging hoe. You tell Olga that Boris says she complains about him all the time. Well, if he'd ever been here to get his work done instead of spending all his time carousing at the inn, I wouldn't have had to complain. And you can tell him I said so, huh? Get off off your ass and talk to your husband you thought was dead for three years, woman. That's my husband. Oh, shut up about your husband. I'm getting really sick between you and your husband. And between you and me, does Boris really look like the carousing at the inn type of guy? I mean, look at him. The guy's got to be, like, pushing 70 years old, and he has no... Oh, God, Devil Hawk! Anyway, so the guy has, like, no skin, and apparently has eczema on his hand because he can't stop moving it. And it's like, hey, Boris. You want to say something? There? There you when go. the days are... Yeah, 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 whatever. Look, Olga said that, uh... <clears throat> Olga said that you're a drunk. Tell him that Olga thinks he was too lazy. Lazy? What was there to do in a shop with no customers? Once the swamp cut off trade here, we had nothing to sell. Lest we forget about your wonderful garlic candy? So just because I would sit at the inn and talk with the other men, she thought I was lazy. The bitch. All she ever did was sit around and give me orders when I was in the shop. What was the point of dusting if no one came in the shop to notice the dust? Okay, well, uh, may your yes, yes, I don't care about your quotes anymore because you guys apparently are not animated out of your little areas there and cannot physically walk 50 yards across Mordavia to talk to one another to sort out your bullshit. It's a good thing I'm here. Sneaky feet, marriage fucking counselor. Back again, so You'll want to take a guess what I could possibly be here for. Boris said you're a nagging shrew. You tell Olga that Boris didn't like being ordered around all the time. Ugh! Oh, I wouldn't have had to order him around if he would only have done his work. I just wanted the shop to be neat and clean in case anyone came in. How does he expect me to do all the work around here by myself? Yes, I've been knitting the same afghan for hours. Business, after all. I still think those knitting needles are a sign of higher intelligence. And I swear to God, when you enter, this cat does move. It, like, jumps up there. 
every time and looks out the wind. Wait a second. Wait a minute. Notice there's a rather large window here. Let's wander on outside. And yeah, there's no wind. Oh, wait. Oh, this this window. Okay, my perceptions are completely skewed because we're on a different. Ah, oh, well, perspective. Whatever. All right. Anyway. Off we go. At least this might help kill some time until it's nighttime. We can do some proper thieving. All right, good. No devil hawk. Fantastic. I'm a chicken hawk. All right. Forget about saving the world from evil entities. Let's patch up your marital issues. Welcome again. It is so good to speak with you as always. The woods around here seem almost frightening at times. When you arrive, I know it is only my imagination that makes me nervous. You're making me a little nervous there, Boris, old buddy. And how exactly have we become such good friends in the 30 seconds cumulative time that we have spoken, and all you do is bitch about your wife? Well, Olga said stuff. I tell Boris that Olga is having trouble running the shop without him. There is much to do to keep the shop straightened up. My family always work together to keep it going before. If only Olga wouldn't nag me all the time. She and I used to enjoy running the shop when we actually had things to sell. What is the point of even running a shop when there is no business? Do you guys want to talk about no business? Ahem, uh -huh. I have no business being in the middle of your bullshit. Fair. But... At this point, I'm pretty well into it, so we might as well go and see this through to our conclusion. He says now, five hours later, Oh, uh, well, you see, uh, we're having these sexual issues, but she's a real dynamo in the bed, says Boris, and not sure why in that voice. You see, uh, yeah, Boris, she's a, she's a firecracker. All right, sphincter time. There, you see the cat move? See it? It does. It actually it works. It is a working cat. Boris said more things. Tell Olga that Boris doesn't see any reason to keep the shop open when there's nothing left to sell. No business. <laughs> you just tell that man about my avocado and garlic sandwiches. <laughs> People come in and buy them all the time. <laughs> hmm. So maybe if I give him a sandwich, that will make him homesick. Let me see. Do I have one? I think I disassembled it for the uh, to catch the gloop. So let's buy another one. All right, let's see. Buy equipment, and I'll take another sandwich. Gosh, I hope I don't run out of money anytime soon. Ho, ho, ho. Just kidding. I'm fucking loaded. <laughs> As my lost yes, he's not lost. Jesus Christ, lady. Have a little bit of a spatial awareness here. Know what's going on around you. We've been talking about your husband, who, by the way, is 50 yards or fucking this way, is uh, quite, uh, quite well alive. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. What if I have to battle that hawk at any given time? Probably not. All right, here he is, sneaky Dr. Phil. Hi! Tell me about your troubles. Good day and... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Olga says, sandwiches, wee! You tell Boris about Olga's avocado and garlic sandwiches. How I used to love her avocado and garlic sandwiches. Avocado and garlic sandwiches. You should have seen the garlic and avocado flowers decorating our wedding cake. She ate them all before the ceremony. And she baked the cake herself. Oh, she always was a good cook. As symbolized by her you girth. Remind me of how much I miss my wife. I shall go back and visit her. Oh, I think we may have patched up a marriage and it, all it took was a little bit of avocado and garlic. May the sun and the moon. May all of your nouns verb things. Okay. So, <laughs> we've essentially patched up a marriage because the dude's hungry and doesn't get fed well enough when he's working in that little boat, that little tower. All right, let's give Olga the last bit of good news, and then I think we should finally go do some real adventuring. Thank you very much. All right, Olga. You again? Uh, please. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Didn't mean to touch stuff. Uh, well, I can't really talk about so, it. Oh, you haven't been eaten yet. 
<laughs> we'll see how long you last traipsing about everywhere when you should be staying in this nice, safe town. Okay, well, she didn't mention anything about Boris, but uh, you know what? I'm going to take this as a moral victory. Boris came back to visit me. When? We had a lot to talk about. How fast is he? Is a fucking flash? It was nice to see him. <laughs> Seemed like old times. Yeah, and I noticed that you guys are still 50 yards away from each other at all times. Do you guys have, like, a restraining order or what? Yes, my husband. Your husband is quite alive and visited you, so stop quoting him. Okay. All right, all right, all right. So now, that's... You know what? Let's never go in that direction again until we really have to. Let's go see what's off to the east. All right, because all that's off in the west are a bunch of warring, old, uh, strifey people. Oh, all right. I feel better. Well, I gotta say, the rest of this town uh, area rather is beautiful. Hmm. Not much to see here. Pretty flowers. You pick a few of the flowers. Wow. Do you really want to say that with a little bit more enthusiasm? It's like, you pick some of the fucking flowers. Whatever. That must have been like the very end of the uh, recording session. All right. Over rivers and streams and hills and graveyards. The background provide a beautiful contrast to the grim gravestones and crypts of the cemetery. Don't forget the tombs of the... Oh! Oh, and it just bled. The tombstone bled. I don't want to be here anymore, but the Spanish moss is beautiful. Scraggly moss hangs over the graveyard. No, it's it's Spanish moss. Scraggly moss is a completely different species. And it looks like there's an open grave all ready to go. That's probably for me. A fresh grave has recently been opened here. Yes. Everyone sounds so creepy here. Can we just go digging around in it? The dirt needs to stay here. Would you like to be buried without a blanket? No. And come to think of it, you'd probably just as soon not be buried at all. Yes. No hurry. They'll put you in one of those in good time. Great. Everything's against me here. Well, let's take a look, because I remember some of these gravestones being kind of funny. Here lies Janos, faithful forever to his lost true love, laid beside her empty grave. Empty grave? That's so sad. So why would they pay to have a gravestone made with nothing in it? This gravestone is marked. No effort could Elissa save. She passed into a watery grave. Her body was lost. Only her memory remains. Sing it with me. But the memory remains! Ah. <coughs> Ow. <coughs> ah. Sorry. I can't do my Metallica impressions. At least not that loudly. Ah. Give me a few, give me a five, give me a All right, let's see what these other ones are. This headstone reads, On a dare, Pasha Sperry spent the night in the cemetery. Something gave him such a fright that now he sleeps here every night. Yes. I really want to hear Boris Stovich and John Rice Davies do like a back-to-back, a -back, side-by-side poetry reading. And I'm pretty sure that Boris Stovich was Jim Cummings again. The inscription on this headstone reads... I always remember this one. Michael Med bumped his head in another man's bed. Now he's dead. Rest in peace. <laughs> I don't know why that one stuck with me. Because you know Michael Med is like... Uh, it's just such a bad made up. Ah, stop it! You're worse than that hawk nature. Cut it out. Here lies the spirit of Barney Blue... To his lover was untrue. Why is he Australian? So, she knew just what to do. Fixed herself some Barney stew. You sound a little bit too happy about that implied cannibalism, John Rice Davies. Here lies the body of Carrie Nation, who answered a vampire's invitation. Now there's cause for lamentation. It was a fatal recreation. Fatal recreation sounds like an awesome... Sequel name for Basic Instinct. Arkin Tenor walked at night. Arkin saw his final sight. Uh, now the question seems to be, what, what in, in the, the world, world did, did Tenor see? That is such an old joke, but appreciated. Two spare coffins await their customers here. Apparently Igor has finally managed to get ahead of business. He's a pretty good coffin maker, I'll give him that. So now we got these two big crypts here. Um, I think one of these might be important. 
An inscription on the door says, House of Lygia Poe. May she rest forever. That's a nice reference. Now this one, this is where things come into play. This is the Borgov family crypt we heard so much about. The Borgov family crypt that we heard so much about. A heavy stone door seals off the Borgov family crypt. A relief carving on the door shows the crest of the house of Borgov. Hmm. Well, the um, chief thief said there was a secret way into the castle from the Borgov family crypt, so it might be worth checking out. Let's take a look. Uh, oh. Well, let's see. We got a lot of options, so let's look at the door. You examine the door closely. Mm. It's massive and well made. It seems to be stone. The lock secures the door. Above the door is an intricate crest with a single word, Borgov, above it. Hmm. Well, can't imagine there's too much activity back there. It is deathly silent beyond the door. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, let's see. Um, pick lock? You need to practice some more. This lock is tricky. Hmm. Well, let's just see. Can we use the crest itself? You need... Hmm. Well, let's get to this. At least we can grind some... Oh! I wonder if I stand there if I get struck by lightning. I'm almost curious. Let's see. Well, now that we have our... Wait. Do we have lockpicks? Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Don't we... We do have lockpicks. Somewhere. Wait, is it this? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Alright, let's do a little bit of grinding here. I'm probably not going to be able to get in here. I remember there being a little bit something more to this, so we'll come back to it. But we're going to remember that that's there. Alright, more exploring. And this is the longest day in this place of eternal night. Oh. Kitty? There's a kitty in there? Uh-uh, I'll, I'll get you, kitty. Hmm, no one seems to be listening. You're not a kitty. Let's go get the kitty. Kitty! Oh, God, it's a tiger! <laughs> oh. Uh, apparently John Rice Davies didn't want to narrate this one. You hear a giggle from behind the bush, then a squeaky voice asks, One and one and one make three. Tell me what you make of me. Reading, writing, riddling game. Can you tell me what's my name? Uh, well, it could either be Rumpelstiltskin, Leshy, Rasalka, Bushman, a wild guess, or I can just make the thief sign and make myself out to an idiot. But I happen to know from that book we read that the Leshy is out here and likes to play riddles on people. Tell the creature it's called the Leshy. Oh, Leshy, not Leshy. Ah, oh! Too much fame. Now you've gone and guessed my name. This thing is terrifying. Okay, bye. Bush. Bush. Bang. It's, oh, God, he's huge. Leshy, Leshy, look and see. In a bush or up a tree. Leashy, leashy, riddle rhyme. Can you solve them every time? There's a bird in your head. And now he's gone. Leshy, leashy. No one seems to be listening. Uh, oh, okay, well, thanks for that little diversion. Oh, let's go back to sneaky mode. There's no real need for me to be running anymore. I should probably... Oh, what time is it? Um... Let's head back to town. Let's go ahead, yeah, because I don't want to be caught here with no stamina whatsoever. And, oh, he's back. Oh, he had little giggles. All right, let's go get him. Hello there, giggles. Oh, okay, now it's this one. All right, I can do this as long as you can, Leshy. Leshy. Ugh. This is not exactly a riddle, Leashy. This is just dicking me around. It's, well, that was kind of good making that bush shrink like that. That was impressive. Where else could he possibly be? Next on how not to be seen. And now he's tiny. Two and two and two make six. A little bush is in a fix. If you save a plant from goo, I can help you with a clue. And another one for the goo counter. Go to bed. This day was a complete waste. I am the most disappointing thief ever. Be right with you, folks. Leave immediately. You have offended my ass, Jim, and my gigantic lips. Michael Med.